the London system is a very solid and quite annoying opening if you're playing as black and you want to get some winning chances. That's why today I'm going to show you some conventional and unconventional ways to play against it, where you can set up some very nice traps along the way. So let's get started with the first line here after the move d4, b5, bishop to f4, we're going to play the move bishop to f5, and here white normally follows up with the move e3. If white goes knight to f3, then we're going to play knight to f6, and we're going to get very similar positions if white goes for e3. And now we're going to play the move e6. So we have already developed this bishop on c8, which very often is a passive piece when it's locked in by the pawn e6. And here white will very often try to punish this by going c4. White can play c4 straight away or after the move knight to f3, where we're going to play knight to f6. But if white goes c4, here we have a very interesting move, which is the move bishop takes b1. So white's idea with the move c4 is to put pressure on b7 after queen to b3, i in this pawn on b7, since we have developed the bishop on c8. That's why we're going to do something quick and we're going to take on b1. And here white has a few options. Let's start with the most natural way to continue, which is probably not the best way, which is taking on b1 with the rook. Here we're going to give a check on b4, and this king on e1 has to move. So white pieces are not going to be very well coordinated after the move of king to e2. Even though this position might objectively be playable for white, it is easier for black to play. So here we can take the pawn on c4, and white has to decide what to do with this king on e2. So after c4, putting pressure on d5 and planning to go queen to b3, remember this idea, we're going to take on b1. Rook takes b1 is good for us. Other options are taking with the queen, which is probably a bit better, because after bishop to b4, White can bring the king to e1, now at least the bishop on f1 is not blocked by the king on e2, and here a move that I like is to go bishop to d6, just planning to trade bishops, so white was having the bishop pair here, now whenever we trade bishops, white is not going to have that potential advantage, so this position is fairly playable for black, even easier to play. If white tries bishop to g3 here, we don't need to hurry taking on g3 because this is a typical idea in the London, whenever white takes with the h-pawn, it will activate the rook, so there's no rush. For example, we can continue with a move like knight to f6, and if white tries to force that, now we can take. Even though white has some pressure on h7, so far this pawn is defended, and in this position we can continue developing, for example, knight b to d7 is an idea that I like, planning to go c6, queen to e7, and e5, and here I'm already preferring black. And the last option after taking on b1 is to go queen to a4, given a check, and after knight to c6, we take on b1, we get a similar position, but here, after bishop to b4 and king to b1, we can take on c4, and after bishop takes, one might have ideas to go bishop to b5, that's why here we can play a6, planning to go bishop to d6, if the bishop on b4 is attacked, and again we're playing as black, we have a comfortable position, even an easier position to play. So let's move on to the second trap, after d4, d5, bishop to f4, instead of going bishop to f5, now we can go e6, going for a main line, after e3, bishop to d6, here white normally goes bishop to g3, if white takes on d6, after queen takes, here we get very easy development after knight to f6, we castle c5 and knight to c6, so this is not critical for white. Instead, bishop to g3 is much more interesting. Here we're gonna play knight to f6. Again, we don't need to rush taking on g3, activating rook on h1. And here after knight to f3, we castle, bishop to d3 and c5. c3, this is a very common setup in the London with this pawn chain and the bishop on d3. And after knight to c6, here what normally goes knight b to d2. The idea is to overprotect e4, since knight to e4 might be an idea. And also, white doesn't want to rush by castling short because taking on g3 with the pawn, activating rook is also in the air. And here we're gonna play the very interesting move, rook to e8. So here, if white plays a natural move like castling, we're gonna take on g3, and after pawn takes e5, black is at the very least equal. Now e4, forking the bishop and the knight is an idea. That's why white is pretty much forced to take. And after we trade a few pieces, rook takes. Black has very easy play and no problems at all. So white will normally try to prevent this e5 idea. If white is trying to look for an advantage, 
by going knight to e5. Here we need to be a bit careful not to take with the knight, because after d takes e5, this will fork the bishop and the knight. But instead we're going to take with the bishop, white will normally take with the d pawn if white wants to fight for an advantage. If white takes on e5 with the bishop, we're going to take on e5 with the knight. And after knight to d7, here white has two ways to protect the pawn e5. Knight to f3 is probably the best way to do it. Here black has a few options, but a move that I like is to simply develop by going b6, then go bishop to b7, and this knight on d7 might come to f8 if white decides to attack h7. But f4 is a very natural move, and probably a more ambitious one, trying to expand on the king side by going e4 later on, but here we're gonna play the move c4, attacking the bishop, and after bishop to c2, it makes sense to keep the bishop on this diagonal. Now we have a fork with the move queen to b6. We attack b2 and e3, and here we're going to win material, and unless white had prepared this line in advance, this position might already become tricky for white. In any case, we want to analyze the best moves for both sides. Here, white should try to castle and try to gain activity by giving the pawn. And here, we're going to take the pawn b2. And now, white, with correct play, can hold the balance. Here, the best move is rook to c1, indirectly protecting the pawn c3. So here, we cannot take on c3 because after bishop takes, we get a discover attack against the queen. But here, white has a very nice move, knight to c5 planning to go knight to d3 and neutralizing this very strong bishop on c2, and we get a very complicated position, but remember that this is only if white follows up with the best moves after playing f4, otherwise black is going to get an advantage. And the last two traps are a bit riskier, but still a lot of fun to try. After d4, we're gonna play knight to f6, and after bishop to f4, we're gonna play the move c6. This might look like a strange move, c6 might be ready to support d5, but there are other ideas like activating the queen on d8 and going g5 as we'll see. So here white normally follows up with the move e3. If white continues with knight to f3, which is another common move, here we can go queen to b6, putting pressure on b2, and black should be doing fine here. White has ideas to go d6 or even g6, planning to fianchetto care to the bishop. But after e3, here's where the fun comes. We're gonna play the move g5, attacking the London bishop. This is the best performing move for black, according to the Liches database. And if white takes the pawn, then we're gonna play the move queen to a5, and we get this very nice fork. We attack the king and the bishop, and we're going to win material. So we see the drawback of the move e3, that now the bishop cannot come back to d2. So after a move like knight to c3, we are gonna simply capture the bishop and get a decisive material advantage. Now, after the move g5, White definitely has better options. Let's evaluate some of them. First of all, taking the knight would give us very easy play. After taking back, bishop to e5 doesn't achieve a lot. We're going to simply go bishop to e7 and we're ready to attack the bishop on e5. So, probably the best way to continue is to go bishop to e3. And here we definitely have a few options. One idea I like if you want to be ambitious is to go knight to e4, planning to trade this London bishop. If white is a strong player, white might try bishop to e5. Here we need to be careful not to go f6, because after queen to h5, we are the ones getting trapped. We get a very nice checkmate. So here after bishop to e5, which is attacking the rook on h8, we're gonna play rook to g8, and now we're ready to go d6, so we get a very sharp position. So if you want to look for a fight, this is a way to go. Here the position is quite complex. h3 might be an interesting idea to be able to retreat and keep the bishop, but just to give you an example, after a move like bishop to d3, now we can go d6, attacking the bishop, and if white takes, we're gonna take on e5, and we get quite a complex position. If white takes on h7, we're going to activate the rook by going rook to h8, and if white takes on e5, here one idea is to go queen to a5, we fork the king and the pawn, so we get this pawn back, we have two bishops, so the position is quite interesting to play if you're looking for winning chances as black. And before I move on to the last trap, if you want to get better at chess besides learning tricky ideas in the opening, I have a free course that will provide you with a full training plan for that. So feel free to check the link in the description. So let's move on to the last trap, which is probably the riskiest one. After d4 and d5, 
bishop to f4, here black can play the very weird h5. In a way, waiting for white to play the most common move in the position, which is normally to follow up with the move e3, which as we see is a very bad move. If white plays another move like knight to f3, then this move h5 might not make a lot of sense, but on the other hand, we are not risking a lot. Here I would probably continue with the move bishop to g4, planning to take on f3. But the main point is that if white goes e3, white might not understand the idea behind h5, but the idea is to follow up with the very nice e5. So we attack the bishop, if white takes with the pawn, then after g5, bishop to g3 and h4, we're simply going to win the bishop. And similarly, after bishop takes e5, we're gonna go f6, and amazingly, the bishop is going to get trapped. For example, after bishop to f4, g5, bishop to g3, and h4, black is winning a piece, even though white will get a few pawns in return. White doesn't have compensation here, so black is already having a much better position. So hope that you like these traps that you can try against the London system. Let me know in the comments if you have tried some of them already. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.